Well, good afternoon, lupus warriors all around the world, and welcome to another video brought to you by the Lord's Lupus and Support channel. How are you guys doing on tonight? I pray that this video finds you doing as well as possible. Also, I would like to personally thank you for stopping by and listening to something that I have to say. Thank you for supporting this channel. I hope and pray that the content that I provide, that you find it informative, helpful, and useful. That is something that you can apply to your everyday life living with lupus. Something that you can tuck away and take with you as you walk on this journey with this mysterious autoimmune disease called lupus. And so on tonight's video, I wanted to talk to you about a very important topic. It's a topic that I have not heard it discussed on any other lupus channels. I could be mistaken, but I personally have not heard anything about this topic. And so what is that topic? It is regarding lupus in your blood vessels. Okay. And so before we jump into this topic, please take a moment to subscribe, hit that like button, share the information and leave a comment in the comment section below. So why is it that it's so important that we discuss lupus in the blood vessels? Well, the blood vessels play an important role in the circulatory system and the blood vessels include the arteries and the veins. The arteries and the veins play an important role in taking blood and distributing it to the body and to all parts of the body. The arteries distribute blood from the heart to the rest of the body and the veins bring the blood back to the heart. And so that's a very important role. And a lot of times when we think about the circulatory system and how lupus can impact that, we focus a lot on the heart but the blood vessels play a very important as well. Whatever impacts the heart eventually will impact the blood vessels. Whatever impacts the blood vessels will eventually impact the heart. They run together. They, you know, the roles are inseparable. The importance of each role is inseparable. Whenever we talk about the, um, the arteries and the veins as part of the circulatory system. This is known as the vascular part of the circulatory system. And so, you know, everything that goes on with the circulatory system is on the inside of the body, it's unseen and it's automatic. And we really don't focus on it or think about, you know, any problems with it until we start seeing signs and symptoms that lets us know that something is going wrong with our circulatory system. So we know that having lupus, you know, gives us a predisposition to a lot of different diseases and other autoimmune system diseases. When we think of, you know, lupus attacking the circulatory system, what is the name of that disease? Well, the name of that disease is called vasculitis. Vasculitis is the inflammation of the blood vessels. And so I talk a lot about inflammation on this channel. We know that inflammation is the culprit, the reason, the symptom behind all diseases. And so whenever there's itis attached to a disease, we know that it automatically means that inflammation is going on. So whenever, you know, lupus or anything attacks the blood vessels, it is called vasculitis. When vasculitis occurs, there is damage happening inside of the blood vessels. There is thickening, there is scarring, and there's a weakening of the blood vessel walls. So vasculitis is a very serious and complicated disease and left untreated, it can be fatal. What are some of the signs and symptoms of vasculitis? Well, there may be redness, swelling, pain, but one of the telltale signs are these red or purple spots, a little bit bigger than the head of this pen. They look like freckles and they're called palpable pure pura. And these occur predominantly on the legs whenever vasculitis is involved, but they can occur anywhere on the body. So what makes a person vulnerable to having an episode of vasculitis? 
Well, we know that lupus, specifically systemic lupus, because systemic lupus means that there is no organ tissue system that's off limits. But there are other autoimmune diseases that can make us vulnerable to vasculitis, and that includes rheumatoid arthritis and Sjogren's disease. Other things that's unrelated to uh, lupus or autoimmune diseases that can make a person vulnerable to vasculitis includes, you know, medications, allergic reactions to medications or substances. It can also include infections or viruses such as HIV, hepatitis B, or hepatitis C. And also cancer patients are at a higher risk and predisposition for an episode of vasculitis. Let me reiterate this. At this time, there's currently no cure for vasculitis, only treatments. And treatments include pain medication, steroids, and other medications as prescribed by the doctor. These medications do not cure vasculitis, but they slow down the progression of the disease. They slow down the inflammation process of the disease. If you are having any of the signs and symptoms that I discussed earlier, make sure to please contact your physician uh, immediately and be evaluated for vasculitis because untreated vasculitis can be fatal. So that is all the information that I have at this time regarding vasculitis. As I always say at the end of every video, there is life after lupus. My friends, take care of yourself. Stay as safe and as healthy as possible. Stay strong and stay encouraged. Know that God loves you with all of his heart and he has a plan and a purpose for your life that involves you showing up as you. Share this video regarding vasculitis with someone. Um, it could make a world of difference. So take care my friends and I will talk to you all soon on the next video. Bye for now, everybody.